There you go. You're looking deep in thought, Pa. Hey everybody, it's Bob from TNT Customs. It's TNT Tuesday. So today we're going to look at some suspension issues and solutions. <clears throat> it's kind of what we do here is come up with solutions to problems. So as you know, we've, we're standing under Spartacus. Um, we put, uh, I don't know what the, three or three and a half inch lift on it. Um, and then as most people are going to do with a gladiator, started putting stuff on it. Um, it's a point of having a pickup stuff. if you can't haul stuff, right? Well, every piece we put on, the rear went Squatty. and lower Squatty. and lower and lower Squatty. to the point that we took it to the more show in Springfield, Missouri a couple of weeks ago and it's been a really long time since I've ridden a hardtail Harley. We were on bump stop, collapsed bump stop. We discussed uh, the bobblehead. Yeah, because aftermarket springs are too soft because we got to make it, uh, I don't know what we got to make it, but it's not a truck. So Aaron, your sliders are coming. <clears throat> They're ready. I just got to ship them. <laughs> so we got back from that trip. Um, I was not pleased with performance of, you know, a $60,000 vehicle plus. Uh, so I put it back in the shop and tore it apart and did, did some of this. <laughs> And uh, so what we came up with, and I won't say it's a novel or unique idea, uh, but I think we perfected it. Um, I knew I needed more weight carrying capacity. Uh, my end goal for this vehicle is to replace Megalander. I need something a little more fuel efficient, uh, something a little smaller. But for those of you that have been on a four exploring trip, you're not going to let me get away with making beans and weenies. Um, you you kind of come to expect our gourmet cooking. So that requires me to haul some gear. And without the weight carrying capacity, it, it's just never gonna happen. So we uh, scratched our heads for a couple of days and um, kind of came up with obviously airbags um, you know the airlift kit's been on the market for a while I'm not 100% sold on it yet um, but it's a an interim solution uh, savvy observers will notice the tags on the springs we went back to factory spring um, but the head the Right. Toe, heavy toe, we, right? we ordered a set of the Max Toe Spring because it is a heavier spring than any of the other factory springs and there is a plethora of factory springs for these. Uh, so that helped with the, the weight capacity. Uh, currently I'm only running minimum pressure in the bags so airlift calls for 5 PSI uh, to be maintained at all times. Um, basically just to keep from ripping and tearing the back. Um, if I had my preference that bags would be external like they are on a, a three-quarter or one-ton truck uh, but there's just nowhere to put them. So we're going to test these internal springs or internal bags and see how they how they survive. Um, obviously it's at full droop. Uh, the bags are seated so, part of the problem is, though, is when you lift a Jeep, right, all your geometry goes bad. All the factory axle brackets are set up at the appropriate angles for factory ride height. Well, then we like to screw with things and lift them and put big tires and do all this other stuff to them. So, it's pretty basic geometry 
if that's your control arms angles from the factory as you lift them it does that right because the axle is being pushed away from the chassis so everything has to change well we came up with this wedge um, I won't say we came up with it rock crawler uses it with their kits but they use a polyurethane um, cast whatever plastic polyurethane whatever it is um, you know we kind of do steel around here so and I change the angles a little bit to match this lift height so when this is down on the ground um, the spring buckets are parallel upper and lower if you ever take a BIC the old school click BIC pen apart and take the spring out and play with it between your fingers um, having unparallel there I can get my see if I can get it to do it unparallel spring seats as you compress it you got too much stuff to hang on to that's your on. that's your trusty side control. um this the spring is shaped like that so as it compresses it does that number right a coil spring to maintain spring rate needs to compress linearly straight up and down any shift in the the upper and lower point will cause that spring to lose spring rate so we, we this is where we spent the most work is in these wedges um, we shifted the center pin forward to get the upper and lower to line up parallel and they're parallel in angle this way at right height it it drives just like factory um, it rides nice it's it flexes well it fully articulates um, yeah you can see here if you look in the in the inside it's hard to see there you go I see you can see how the centering pins are offset so as you roll the axle back it kicks that factory one to the rear well yeah. we need it to the front to line up with the upper um, and then our upper it's hard to see well, maybe there it is so we just I mean it's a simple spring spacer um, and you can't see it through the coil spring but all the other spring spacers on the market are just a piece of tube well with airbags that piece of tube is eventually going to cut through the airbag so we actually have a, a welded plate on the tube to distribute the load on the bag um, it's so you've a, got your lift with factory springs, but plates top and bottom. Right. And so it, it carries the load that the the factory engineers designed these trucks to carry, not the soft, squishy spring. It's not a rock crawler. I'm sorry. It's a 138-inch wheelbase. It's not going to survive in South Dakota. You just, it's not going to do it. This is an adventure rig. Um, I right. Think, so you're going to have some things off oh, road, but you're I, not you going know, and doing Pritchett Canyon. Right. We don't go on our four exploring trips and go to the mall. We actually go out and go wheeling, right? You'll still have full articulation, still keep the tires on the ground. The springs are captive. You know, it's at droop. There's, there's tension in the spring, so you're not going to kick... You're not going to kick the springs out. Um, Even at full droop, because you're at up on full the full droop. Yeah. So, you know, it's, there's a lot of factory things I change, but there's some things they kind of got are, right. What are those, Bob? Um, so, in addition to this particular lift package, we had to come up with a particular set of bump stops. Um, ours, everything cycles out. Um, the way we cycle bump stops, and I don't know if I can, if I can get if I get it out, I might not get it back in, but there. Whoa! <laughs> so when we set bump stop, this is bump stop. This to here, that is a hard stop. Under full load, those will compress. So I need to know exactly in a real world situation where I'm all twisted up where I'm not going to rip the fender flares off or do body damage. 
So when we set bump stops up, we set them hard surface to hard surface, and then it just acts as a progressive um, bump stop as you come up on it. So this package, the Max Toe Flare 35 inch tires, them little rivets up there in the flares, it just rubs the heads of those rivets. Dump, 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 dump. I like to rub paint. So we let it fly right to the point that it can't fly. Oh, the anymore. rivets on the outside. Right. Yeah. It actually, yeah. this tire actually will tuck inside. It rubs these little bumps in the flares. Yeah. On full articulation. Spartacus is dirty. Yeah, it's kind of nasty. So, <laughs> so that's you know that's just some of this is a kit that'll be on the website here in the next week or month, month or whatever or two. <laughs> um, we can build them. So give us a call. Um, so that's how you set up the rear. What'd you do for the front? Well, I'm not done in the rear oh. yet. Oh. So the okay. other the magic factory track bar geometry on these is horrible. It's just horrible. The factory track bar bolt is normally about there, right? And you can see it's way over there. So we designed a nine inch longer track bar, kick this bracket clear over as far as I can push it. Um, so it changes the roll center and it, it drives night and day different. So that's factory location that there. that still right now is factory that's the next one to get cut off this will go and the bolt will come out here to be evenly spaced from axle center line so this you one's still a little on short no stuff? it won't hit on anything when we're done with it um right now i can't get shocks as most people in the industry can't get shocks my I'm shocks for shocks. this are scheduled to be built on the 17th of March. And um, we ordered them two months ago? Oh yeah, it's been a while. So, um, good for Glenn, he's backed up, but I had to do something, so we developed a, a shock relocator. It's a bolt-on assembly, you do have to drill that hole, is not there from the factory. So you get it all on, you drill that hole, you put that bolt in. But one thing I did is change the shock geometry. We kicked it forward and up. So that's so a, there's the shock is that part came of on kit. Spartacus. So if, you know, if you guys out there with gladiators want to just put a basic lift on, so you can get bigger tires on it and maybe do cool stuff later, there it is. I mean, you got a bolt-on kit, factory spring. Uh, a shock relocation bracket in the rear, and you can have your your. Yeah, you didn't change your, arms or anything. Nope, it still has factory arms in it. We do have fully adjustable arms. They're in powder coating. I'll install them this weekend. Um, oh, Steve was asking about hitting the spare tire. No, Steve, there's no, lots of room in between there. Clears all day long. It will actually take a 37-inch tire. It is a tight fit. But a 37, as most of the Gladiator folks know, a 37 will fit in there. It is wicked tight, but it will right. go. Anything bigger than a 37? Your problem. You're putting it somewhere else. <laughs> um, so some the other things we've been working on, got an engine skid on it. We've been driving it around. It's filthy. Um, testing a new motor or a new strut design. So this will make the install simpler for a lot of people. Um, so those will come out sometime today and go to powder coat so I can finally call that project the done. the other side, it goes up to, uh, I'll put the light on there. Yeah, don't show them that side, that side's wrong. Oh, I thought it was right. Um, <laughs> so we did a, a shock relocation bracket in the front. Same thing, it's a bolt-on deal. This hole is here, but it's a goofy hole, so you will have to run a drill bit through it and kind of clean that hole up so you can put a nut in it. So this was the factory one? What? This is the factory shop. Okay. Now. This That's is our piece, extension. As an extension. Okay. Because we still have the factory Rubicon springs in it. Right. We are running an aftermarket front spring. Uh, very happy with them. So, but we have bump stop so basically we can do a three inch lift rear 
for your gladiator now. Um, our adjustable front track bar and bracket. It is a bolt-on bracket, and then when you're all said and done, we put a couple little security welds on it just because. Um, we talked about this before, but the light shining on it, we're running the off-road only sway lock. Uh, sway bar, really happy with that. So, that's all I really want to talk is about, it Spartacus. Yeah, it's on yeah. the other side. Okay. Okay. So, the, the point of this is rear suspension and suspension geometry. So as you can see, we got a JK on the lift over here. And our, one of our go-tos, Curry, um, we order these axles with no brackets. The reason I do that is it's nothing against Curry. Their brackets are, are fine, everything works. Um, but when you're setting up a fully built Jeep, you're going to alter pinion angle. Well, they put all the bracketry at factory spec. So everything rolls as you turn the pinion up. It's not, this has a CB drive shaft in it, so you got to turn the pinion up a little. So I order them no brackets. One reason. So I can reset all the bracketry to the new pinion angle. But more importantly, our bracketry, we do the long track bar, right? Factory track bar is over here somewhere. Um, yeah, where's the coil spring? Actually, I think the factory track bar is over here somewhere. Coil spring is there. Right? This is coil spring. Yeah, it's over oh. here on a JK. So there again, we're putting a nine and a half or so inch longer track bar, and it completely changes the roll center and actually makes these drive right. If you don't believe me, go look under the rear end of a JL. The factory figured it out on the JL and made a longer track bar. Then they screwed the gladiators up and put a short track bar in them again. So this, this is all one assembly. It's fully welded from us. You just stick it on the axle. Get the angle right. The shock mounts are bolt-on. There's actually two positions. You can alter the the height of the shock mount, depending on what you need for droop or up travel. Once you've got them in the right place, then those get welded in. We haven't done that yet. But savvy JK owners will see this, this distance. A factory lower control arm mount on a JK, the bolt is down here in the weeds, as is the shock mount. So we raise the shock mount, we raise the lower control arm, most importantly, raise that pivot point, which flattens out the control arm geometry and makes them drive better. When you raise this, you have to raise the upper. And we give you three choices on the upper arm bracket to really dial in your instant center. Um, That's the one in the front. Right. Here. Yeah. Yep. We give you two choices for track bar. Where you can really dial in your roll center. Um, we have adjustable coil buckets, right? You can, if you're going to alter wheelbase a little bit, back to that, keeping the upper and the lower parallel. So now you can slide that back and forth to where everything lines up and then take it apart and weld it where you need it. We have adjustable bump stops pads they have slots in them so the piece that goes on here can be slid back and forth so you can maintain full bump stop contact you know we solve a lot of these problems we're not great at telling people we solve all these problems and that we have yeah. all these product even your salesperson doesn't know that that part exists <laughs> this is like the 10th jeep we've done this to but it's not on our website i know and it's not it in our quickbooks <laughs> It needs to get, they're, they're dialed in. These are production parts. They came yeah. straight out of manufacturing. Sean welded them on. Everything's right. So we will have this whole bracket kit for you do-it-yourselfers. And since we're making it in-house, this is factory dimension axle tube. We can do it in a 3.5-inch radius. We can do it in a 4-inch radius. 
Ooh, so, what's four inch? What axle is that? 80 and some oh, of the newer 14 bolts are four inch <laughs> axle tube. So we have brackets that will fit any rear end you could potentially put in the back of a JK. Some are good, some are bad, but you know, that's and, not my choice. And really only Tanner knows those secret sauce ingredients. Right. So, so call Tanner. <laughs> get out knows, with Tanner. Um, what are you what are you gonna do with the exhaust right there, Bob? Well we one downside <laughs> is a full length track bar with an auxiliary gas tank. Um there's nowhere to bring the exhaust. So we're gonna fabricate, we're gonna take the resonator out. Obviously the muffler is gone, because um, that's where the gas tank is now. So we're gonna move the muffler up underneath the chassis and this will just get a turn down, right? So it turns right down underneath in front of the axle. So is this tank a bigger tank or what it's was the a, purpose of the tank? An extra tank? It's an extra tank. Ah, so well. Genrite, markets this now for their, I don't know what they call it, their four length suspension deal where you have to take the factory gas tank the out of it. The four door tank out. This becomes your gas tank. We use it with a couple of easy mods as an auxiliary tank. So this uh -huh. Jeep now has the factory tank and Which an auxiliary going back tank. In there. Yeah, that goes back in. Yeah. So the factory tank's uh, 21 and a half gallons, I think. This is 21 or 21 and a half gallons. So effectively, David now has 40 gallons of usable fuel without having to deal with a jerry can. I hate jerry cans, they suck. And so just like in our JK, he'll have yep. a switch to flip. Flip a switch, it's on the fly switchable. Um, at least my Jeep is. We'll, we'll see if this newer computer will tolerate that or not. But if not, pull over, shut the Jeep off, switch the tank, start the Jeep back up, and the computer then sees... The new tank. It switches, yep. it switches it everything. It reads on the gauge and everything. Yeah, everything yeah. works. Um, it's, yeah. it's foolproof. Yeah, It cool. takes a little bit to install because you have to alter the entire fuel system. Cool. Um, but we have all that worked out here in the shop. Bring us your Jeep. We can... If you're truly an overlander or adventurer, uh, especially with a V8-powered JK, you don't have enough range. Ask me how I know. <laughs> um, I did this mod to my Jeep years ago, and now we're doing another one. I've got another one lined up to do. Um, bring it here. It's, it's, for us, it's easy. It's a little complicated for, for doing at home, but... Um, okay. So that's okay. the point of TNT Tuesday today is we do, we fix suspension geometry. We have the brackets to get things right after you lift them. Yeah. They're not bolt on. They're not easy, but the end result is worth the effort. So. Yeah. The ride is good. Everything's yeah, good. Just, and if David runs out of fuel with that and that, he can always get a Rotapax mount. <laughs> for the back of his spare tire, Absolutely. which he will still have his spare tire. Which on our next trip, coming up here in, I don't know, 10 days or 11 or whatever I'm down to, um, we will, he will have a Rotopax can on the spare, just for backup. Uh, he, we, even if somebody else runs and out. And then, so yeah, we, we have nice. another four gallons of fuel floating around in the group that we can divvy up if we have a problem. So, because okay. we are going way off grid. That works good. So, so today's March 2nd. What else do you think you got coming up in the next next week or so? Well, I got to finish. I'm working on some stuff on this that I'm not willing to talk about yet. Um, we're close. Everything so far is working. Um, I have a little gremlin I got to fix, um, but we're doing all the overland upgrades now. Put in the 50 watt UHF VHF radio. That's all mounted and wired out to under the hood. You don't want to see under the hood. I got a disaster at the moment, but I'm working all that refrigerator. wiring out. Refrigerator. Uh, refrigerator. Jason and I have been working on a rear seat delete. A uh, very simple piece you can do at home. It's eight bolts, I think, and the factory seat comes out. And then there's two bolts 
that attach the 60 to the 40. And if you look at the seat, you'll understand it's a 60-40 split. So you can separate that seat and you'll be able to keep the single seat or the double seat and have a flat platform opposite of the piece of the seat you keep or you get you can put both pieces in to completely delete the seat so for this trip I'm going to completely delete it and run the whole kit uh, that should come out next day or two for me to test fit and finalize um, we're Linex dealer so that this is Mary's going huh what but they can probably be Linex for you before we ship them. That way you have a nice surface and nothing's going to slip or slide around on it. For a fee, of course, um, we have mm -hmm. to run that through the line X, but the They'd machines are sitting there. We can do that before we ship them. Um, um, or they can be powder coated, whatever you choose. Uh, Cotty did put up here that Rockfest is sold out. Yep, Rockfest has been sold out for yep. two weeks. Uh, you can still call and put in a request um, you never know, list. people will have a cancellation, uh, you know, God forbid a death in the family or whatever, and they can't come, so at the last minute, so if you want to go, call Cotty or get a hold of Cotty and get on a waiting list, because you never know, there could be a couple slots pop open. Um, so that one's sold out. Our spring adventure for For Exploring is sold out, was, I had a cancellation this morning. Um, so I have one space open on Spring Adventure, May 17th through the... Did you have a waiting list for that yet? No. Oh, so okay. If so. anybody wants to go on that one, um, I have one space open. And that's the one to the Hole in the Rock. Yeah, we're going to do Hole in the Rock in Southern Utah. So That'll be fun. Excellent trail. Excellent, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Um, so our other trips have spaces Northwoods is getting close to being sold out and that's August um, no Northwoods is September oh September okay. um, after the Keweenaw Overland Adventure Retreat uh, we leave that Sunday from that camp okay. and wander around the Northwoods um, so I got one or two spaces on that one Fall Adventure we've got some room uh, Fall Adventure is a classic for us Oh, I like that. Um, we're going back to San Rafael Swell this year. Um, just so pretty. phenomenal. So pretty. Phenomenal so different from there. so um, much other so different. If you got any tours. desire to go, um, hit me up and I'll get you on the list and we'll start sending you details. Okay. So. so maybe next week we'll see some more under the hood of Spartacus yeah. and inside. Yep. You can show some of the new mounts and stuff that we're going to be doing and we got a few other things on our list but there's always things on the list yeah <laughs> yeah endless so that's about yeah almost half an hour it's lunchtime <laughs> so we're good to go so, thanks and for tuning in um put stuff in the comments uh we do read them uh be sure to share our video yeah, share the video i'll, I'll get it up there get it out in a there. little bit and like our page if you don't or go follow our youtube channel it's tnt customs tv is the youtube channel so go over there we got a bunch of stuff over there too um dig through the archives there's some really cool old videos in there so um, give us a i think a thumbs up is what you do on youtube i don't know but whatever you do over there, do that. And, uh, you know, Instagram, Chris is doing a pretty good job on Instagram, getting a lot of content out there. If you're not following us, slide over to Instagram and give us a like, I think, or a heart, or a, whatever you do on Instagram. You guys know, I don't know. <laughs> um, so. uh, Tori Harvey said he sent an email. He hopes to join the fall adventure. Yep, Tori's, he's on my list. Yep. So. All right, well, if there's nothing else, I'm hungry. All right, well, uh, tune out here and see you guys next week. All right, bye. Come on.